Okay, so we've got the first part of our birthday app done. In the last lesson, we're going to finish up some of the uh, basic application code here. Um, one of the things we haven't done is um, displayed the birthday uh, rows yet in this repeating panel. So we'll call this button show all. And when we run that, we've already copied and pasted some code, but this button is currently not wired up to do anything that's clicked. So let's click on the little arrows here that'll wire it up with this function for button two, which is what it's called. And uh, all that's gonna do is set the items property of the repeating panel to uh, the data that's returned from this get info function. So, and we'll server call calls get info. Let's look at the get info function. And what all that's doing is performing a search on the birthdays table and returning the rows in ascending order, ordering them by, uh, by date. So now let's go back. We'll look at this, make sure that when we run it, we click on this show all button. It should now populate the repeating panel. And there we go. Okay. So the repeating panel is now working. Uh, looks like we also, right now, if we click on the info, that little link isn't wired up to do anything. So let's go back to our info link, wire that up so that when it's clicked, it runs. Now, we copied and pasted this code. Um, and originally, it looks like I have this wired up to something called link one or link two click. So I'm going to move that code down here delete this link to click function. We'll make it run when we run the link one click click. And all that's going to do is open form info. Let's make sure that's been spelled properly. I'll use the autocomplete to um, to check that that is correct. Aha. This is interesting. So it looks like I have put this form underneath this form one package. It doesn't really need to be underneath the form one package. So I'm going to bring it out back out here, move this out. So it's its own file. The template is the, a sub form of form one. It's the repeating panel template. Um, info is its own form. It doesn't really matter where it is, but when we refer to this, we just want to have it sitting out as its own package. So let's go back to form one. Let's see if we find this now. There we go. Info. So it's not a sub form of form one. Looks like that was just dragged there unintentionally. Okay, so now we've got this link button wired up. Let's click on link. Try this one more time. Run form one. Uh, uh, in, uh, an indent does not match. Okay, so we've done something wrong with in, indentation. And Anvil is very helpful in debugging in the console here. It gives us a link to form one, line 29. Let's see what we've got there. Aha. Uh -huh. You can see this is oops, one indent off, Could I run it again. That's just from copying and pasting. There we go. Everything seems to be working. I'll hide our console here, run the app. Let's click on the info link. Great, it goes back, goes to the info page. We don't have our home button wired up there. So let's go do that. On the info page, we have got a link back to home. Let's wire up a click event there. And that's where we're going to open up form one. So that was a little code that I copied and pasted, but typically you just click on the event. It'll automatically create the event handler function and you write the code that you want to have or you want to run when that event occurs. So here we want to open a form one. Let's check, make sure that's working. Info. Good. Go back home. 
Beautiful. Now we can show all the events. Let's uh, add something new. Your friend Tommen and give him a birthday back in 2012. And let's see, we don't want to give Tom anything. He's not that good a friend. Good, Tom's edited. Now if we show all, Blamo, it updates and we can, we can automate that. But for now, just to make it clear uh, where these events are occurring, whenever I click on the show all button, it repopulates the, um, the repeating panel with all of the rows of the database. And we have each of those labels bound to the name, date, and gift columns of the birthday database. Hopefully that's starting to become a little bit more familiar. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna do next here. This covers everything that, that happens in the tutorial up to that point. Good, this is all good. So what we need to do now is add user accounts. So we are gonna go back here and we're gonna add a add user account, the user account feature. And there are a couple of things that we can adjust about how authentication works in Anvil. So we can wire um, these user accounts up automatically so that users can sign in with their Google account, their Facebook account, uh, a Microsoft account. We can also use a magic link in an email, um, but generally we'll just, uh, I'll use in my examples, email and password and Google. That's usually enough for most people. Um, we have a lot of options. Um, because this is just a little app, I don't want uh, to have to authorize um, new users. I'm gonna check this allow visitors to sign up and I don't want them have to confirm an email address by clicking a link before they can use their accounts. That's just a typical, um, uh, a typical routine that you'll see on most websites. Um, we'll disable that here because I wanna make this quick and easy. Users can just sign up for an account, put their email address in and the account is created. And we wanna make sure that users can, or user accounts can be used right away. Um, because I have no reason to, to check these accounts to make sure they're right. This is just for testing, but all of these options are available. If you want to make people uh, confirm with an email, if you wanna somehow confirm on the server, all of those options are available. Okay, so now we have that service created in Anvil. And what we're gonna do is to use it, we're going to call this anvil.users.login with form. Um, and that will run that user login service and authentication service um, and require users to log in with one of those two options we selected, either the email or the Google login. And we're going to put this in the um, init method of the application, right in form one, so that the application now when it's run requires a new user. Now you see the first time we do this, it's gonna create some tables. So when you're creating an application, um, you'll see some, some information in the console returned. Let's give this uh, fake email, Nick at site.com. So uh, because we don't have the verification turned on, um, I can type in any uh, email address, but if you do turn on the email verification, the user will have to verify it in their email account. And let's just give it a password, 1111. Uh, and that's not gonna work here because we haven't actually signed up for an account. So let's create a new account. Here we get the chance to create a email and a password, or we can just choose to sign in with Google. There we go. Now we've got um, a user working with this application signed in with their, um, with their uh, email or Google account. Okay, so that little bit is all we need to do to begin authenticating users. 
So you can see here, we've got the sign form. And all we need to do now to interact with the database is add a couple lines. We're going to get the current username by using this method anvil.users.getUser. And then as long as that user exists, so if current user is not none, then we'll run the database functions. And what we're going to do when we, um, when we add a new row is we're going to uh, set the user column to be equal to the current logged in user. So we're going to add that to each row of the database. So each row of the database has a logged in user. And then we're going to go over to our um, server function and make sure that when we run the get info function, we also check to see that the current user is logged in, is a, a current, is a uh, registered user. And if that current user is not none, then we can run the search on the database. And with all of those things together, we now have some updated functions. I'm going to copy those updated functions, those few little features for user management, put that in our server code. So that's going here. So you can see now we've gotten the current user using the anvil, got, anvil users get user method. And as long as that's not none, we're running the add row method and saving in the user column, current user. So we're going to need to add to our data table a user column. We're going to link that table to the users. Click on the right thing. We're going to link that table to a single row in the users column. Call this user. Good. And we've got our, our function already logging us in. So all of that user login routine happens on the server. So let's run. We logged in just recently. Okay, so nick at site.com. We use one 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 one. Log in. Okay, let's add a name. Call this Phil. Try to name Phil and select a birthday. Let's say Phil's very, very old. And we'll go shopping with Phil. Add that. Phil has been added. Now let's show all, and you'll see that all that comes up is Phil, even though we have all of these other database entries. The only row of the database that has the user nick at site.com listed as the user is this one row with Phil. So nick at site.com only has access to that row of the database. And again, that's in our server code. Oh, look at this, I can uh, delete some of this up here. Let's just delete what was there. Just checking to make sure all this is same. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. This was duplicate that I copied and pasted. Okay, so that check for the um, for the user that's logged in is in this. Uh, actually, it's down here in this search. We're only returning the rows of the birthday table where the user is equal to the current user that is logged in. So with that now, we've got a, a database app that can be logged into by multiple users. 
we've got a routine to authenticate them and you have all of the possible routines that are uh, in this Anvil uh, authentication routine. And you have all of these potential methods. If we want to add a method, if we want to add, for example, Facebook login or Microsoft, if you have a certain plan, you can add that. Or if you want to remove the email and just allow signing in with Google, then um, you can you can change how users can authenticate themselves. But those are some good common ways to do authentication. Email requires typically, you know, responding to an email. If we have this confirmation checkbox uh, dialog checkbox uh, checked, so we can change how we allow users to create accounts and authenticate themselves. And then with just those few lines of code in form one, all we're doing is adding anvilusers.login with form. That runs the authentication process. And then in the server code, when we add a, um, a new row to the birthday database, um, all we're doing is checking first, we're getting the current user using anvil.usersgetuser. And then if that user exists, then we're adding to the app table, uh, birthday table, a row, and we've added a user column, which is tied to the user's database. Saving that whenever we save a record, and then whenever we search for records, we are returning rows that um, have a user in the user column that is equal to the current user. So that's how we create multi-user multi apps in Anvil. That will be another really common uh, functionality. So we've got this published now at birthdaysapp.anvil.app. From this point on, what I'm going to do with all of the tutorial applications is I'm going to create them and we'll just go through and look at the functionality so that you can make it through these apps a little faster. I think at this point you should have a good um, a good feel for how the, the creation of Anvil apps works in general. And I'll just go through a little bit more quickly at this point. 